All right, let's talk about something at the very heart of human desire that feels, well, completely backwards. It's a genuine psychological puzzle, and today we're going to try and solve it. Why the very thing that should feel like a threat can sometimes be unbelievably attractive. So let's just get right into the thick of it. Why on earth would the presence of a rival, a direct threat to your relationship, sometimes trigger not just jealousy, but this powerful, undeniable wave of desire? I mean, on the surface, it just feels like a bug in our system, right? A total evolutionary glitch. But what if it's not a bug at all? What if it's a feature, a really sophisticated, competitive program that's been forged over millions of years of evolution, and it's still running deep inside our brains today? It turns out science has a pretty stunning answer to this puzzle. The key that unlocks this whole mystery is something called sperm competition theory. Yeah, it sounds intense. Back in 1970, a biologist named Jeff Parker proposed this idea that for a lot of species, the real reproductive battle doesn't end when sex does. In fact, that's where the real race begins, down at a microscopic level. And this theory totally flipped the script on how scientists looked at reproduction. It basically revealed this hidden cellular battlefield, a biological arms race happening right inside the female reproductive tract. This suddenly wasn't just about winning a mate. It was about making sure your genetic legacy won the war. And this slide right here is the perfect illustration of evolution in action. Just look at our great ape relatives. On one hand, you've got gorillas. One dominant male has exclusive access, so there's very little competition, and as a result, they have relatively small testicles. But then you look at chimpanzees, who live in this highly promiscuous society where competition is absolutely fierce, and evolution's response? Massive testicles. You gotta flood the zone to win the numbers game. So the big question is, where do we humans fit in? Well, if you look at our anatomy, we land somewhere right in the middle of that spectrum. We're not as intensely competitive as chimps, but our biology makes it crystal clear that some level of sperm competition was a regular, powerful force that shaped our ancestors for a very, very long time. So how do we know this isn't just some abstract theory? Well, the evidence is literally written into our physiology. Our own bodies carry the fossil record of this ancient competition. Just think about this number for a second. 200 to 500 million. That's how many sperm are in a single typical human ejaculate. Why on earth would you make that kind of massive biological investment for a race that only has one winner? Well, that kind of ridiculous overproduction only makes sense in one context. You're expecting a full-on battle with a rival's army. And the adaptations get even more wild and specific. There's research suggesting the unique shape of the human penis might actually work to scoop out competitor semen. Studies show that men produce more sperm when they've been away from their partner for a while, almost like the body is anticipating a higher risk of competition. Heck, even seminal fluid itself contains compounds that can attack and slow down rival sperm. Our bodies are, quite literally, built for this war. Okay, so the body is primed for battle. It's physically ready to go. That's clear. But that doesn't explain the feeling, does it? The psychological part. Why does our brain translate what should be a threatening, competitive situation into a powerful feeling of arousal? And if you're sitting there thinking this is just some rare psychological quirk, well, check this out. 58%. That's the percentage of men who, according to researcher Justin Lenmiller, have fantasized about their partner with another man. This is not some fringe thing. It's a surprisingly common feature of human sexuality. And here is the absolute crucial point. The brain isn't messing up. It isn't malfunctioning. It's running a perfect simulation. A fantasy like this contains all the ancient, high-stakes cues. Your partner, a rival, a direct reproductive contest that our evolutionary programming is specifically designed to respond to. And what follows is this incredible chemical cascade. The brain detects that rival cue, and boom, dopamine floods the reward system, which cranks up your motivation. Then, noradrenaline spikes, sharpening your focus and alertness. And on top of that, testosterone levels rise to fuel the whole competitive effort. It's this potent neurochemical cocktail designed for one single purpose, to compete and to So, what does all this ancient history, all this deep programming, actually mean for us living here in our complex, modern world? How does it all translate into the desires we feel today? It really means that jealousy and arousal are not polar opposites. They are two different strategies, two sides of the very same competitive coin. Think of it this way. Jealousy is your first line of defense. 
it motivates you to prevent the competition from ever happening. But if that defense fails, that same system can pivot and channel all that emotional energy into arousal to help you win the competition. This quote from the research really just nails it, doesn't it? The arousal doesn't represent a pathology or a paradox. It represents an evolved mechanism operating exactly as designed. It's not a sign that something is broken. It's a sign that this ancient, powerful system is working perfectly. Now, of course, understanding our biology doesn't mean we are slaves to it. Not at all. What this knowledge really gives us is a new lens to look through. It's a framework for understanding our sometimes confusing, sometimes contradictory emotions and desires. And that, in itself, is incredibly empowering. And that brings us to a final, really provocative thought to leave you with. If this one powerful instinct forged in our deep evolutionary past is still so clearly shaping our desires today, what other ancient instincts are quietly at work just beneath the surface of our modern lives?